If you're taking the LSAT in six months, you've got time to make a massive score increase. Let's get to it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share your six-month LSAT study plan. Before I get into it, a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So the reason I'm making this video is that a lot of folks are asking me, how do I make the most of six months between now and LSAT test day? The framework underlying all of my study plans is the LASER approach to LSAT prep. LASER is an acronym standing for Learning, Accuracy, Sections, Exams, and Review. The earlier phases of the study plan involve learning accuracy, essentially building the foundation. The later stages involve taking timed sections and then taking full-length timed exams, while, of course, reviewing those in depth. So if you've got six months to prep, I would say take at least the first two months to focus just on learning and accuracy. Learning is building that foundation by reading LSAT prep textbooks, watching course lesson videos, and accuracy is drilling questions by type to become clear on the different perspectives from which to approach each question type. So again, you do that for at least two months. I don't recommend taking cold diagnostics because it simply tells you what you already know you haven't learned the material yet, and so as a result, it could often be discouraging. We'll save that for later. By the time you get to month three, however, you do want to start working on your pacing, your timing, by taking timed sections, 35 minutes under standard accommodations, reviewing those in depth to work on your pacing, making sure that you're not running out of time as you get towards the end of the section. In logical reasoning, for example, where you have a clear general order of difficulty, you're going to want to get through the earlier questions more quickly to build up a time bank to apply to the tougher questions that come later in the section. Ideally, you want to finish the section with a little bit of time to spare so that you can go back and handle whichever tough questions you might have flagged earlier in the section. Then you do that for at least month three, maybe month four, but then certainly months five and six are focused on taking full length timed exams and reviewing those exams in depth. Standard timing for the LSAT for a full length sitting is gonna be two 35 minute sections back to back, a 10 minute break, and two more 35 minute sections back to back, and that's it. When you're taking your timed practice tests, you wanna time yourself strictly and don't give yourself any additional breaks. Of course, if you do have accommodations for time and a half or double time, you may get additional breaks as well, in which case, of course, adjust accordingly. But with standard accommodations, standard timing, 35 minutes per section, only one break in the middle between sections two and three, that's it. I recommend taking at least 10 full-length timed exams before the big day. So you could start simply 10 weeks prior to test day, maybe in the middle of month four, for example, you take a timed exam a week, review it in depth, one exam per week, starting in the middle of month four, all the way through until test day itself at the very end of month six. Of course, if you wanna do more than 10 exams, you can. You might wanna do two time exams a week, assuming that your work schedule or your school schedule or family obligations are not too hectic, not too crazy. You could do that, but make sure that you're also allowing time to review in depth. I have a framework for this called the Socratic Review Method. It's a cornerstone of my courses and my coaching. The idea being, that you wanna drill down into exactly what is giving you trouble regarding a certain question, why you got it wrong, what was tempting about the wrong answer choice, for example, that made you pick it, what ultimately makes it wrong, what was unappealing about the right answer choice that pushes you away from it, and what ultimately makes it correct. So you have these traps of encouragement towards the wrong answer, traps of discouragement away from the right answer, and we wanna figure out exactly what's holding you back. So of course, you can avoid making the same mistake again. Now, if taking two timed exams a week is going to prevent you or limit you from being able to review them in sufficient depth, 
you may want to take fewer exams so you can increase the time devoted to review. Only you know your situation, but again, we want to make sure that you're devoting plenty of time to review in order to extract the key lessons and takeaways from the questions you complete so that you can study more effectively going forward until your next exam, of course. So that, there you have it, folks. That's your six-month study plan using the laser approach. The first two months devoted to learning and accuracy. The third month, maybe the fourth month as well, devoted to sections, timed sections for your pacing. And then months five and six focused on exams, endurance, and of course, review. So anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor. Share this with someone who needs to see it. If you know anyone who's putting together their LSAT study plan, anyone who's self-studying, anyone taking the LSAT in roughly six months, even four or five months, this video could be useful in helping them use their time effectively, helping them structure their LSAT study plan, making sure they're not just jumping into the timed exams, but rather building that foundation first, then getting to the timed exams. I don't do any advertising for this channel. I rely only on word of mouth to help get the word out. So please do me a favor, just share this link with someone who needs to see it. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.